Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 46 of the Hardly Millennial Podcast, where we are young, we are dumb, and we are full of... Opinions, baby. <gasps> opinions, opinions, opinions. So, uh, my name is Adam, as always. I am one of your hosts, and across from me, as always, is Matthew Lynn, your other beautiful host. Hey guys, hope you're having a good one today. <sighs> so, to get started here... Adam made a boo-boo on the podcast yesterday. Uh-oh. Yes. That never happens. I know. I just gave <laughs> I just gave a little bit of false information about oh. something that was happening. So Well, let's it, clear it up. Yeah. So it was in regards to what I was talking about with South Africa. And I was talking oh. about that there was like a group there that was putting white people into like concentration camps. Right. So, I remember that. So first of all, it's concentration camps was kind of an extreme word for it. What's Ooh. What's actually happening is kind of based off what I was also saying, where it was like there's a lot of white people in ghettos, like trailer parks and everything right now. Uh So what's happening is uh, white people who had jobs or were already living in places are being like kicked out of those areas and being put into these like trailer park things. So they are in camps that are in concentrated areas yes but, but they are not your typical concentration camp yes you know so okay. just before that gets misconstrued they're, they're not killing Disclaimer. white people or anything but they are pushing them there also the yellow jackets i got mixed up for a group that was in paris it's a oh, it's a group in paris right that's rioting due to a political discord Okay. But, uh, so I just mushed those two stories together and used verbiage I probably shouldn't have. Yeah, you know, but you know, millennials. Yeah, you know, we're young and dumb happens. and full of opinions. So. Well, thank you for clearing that up, Adam. I feel yes, better about yes. the whole thing now. But uh, continue on to what's happening in the news right now. Oh, what do, happened today? Do you remember that story I told you about? Uh, it was a while back, but there was this actor from the show Empire named Jussie Smollett. Yeah, who would like stage an attack against himself? Oh yes, you know the whole he staged the racism thing. Yeah, that he got beat up because of his race or whatever. Yeah, and, but it it was it was all a show. Mm-hmm. So, okay, yeah, I remember that. So what he had said, just to reiterate, so what he had said was that two masked men came to him while he was walk like walking home from like a sandwich shop at two a.m. Uh huh. And he was in Chicago. <clears throat> And they started uh, beating him up, pouring bleach on him, put like a noose around his neck and was, you know, saying racial and gay slurs. Okay. And he's black and gay for those who don't know. Oh, he's gay too. They haven't been following the story. Well, that's good to know, I guess. So, so, and they were shouting things like, this is MAGA country. Uh, and, make America Great yeah, Again. Yeah, Make America Great ah, yeah, Again. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And so all of that. And he said that he knew one of the people were white because he could see, they, even though they were because masked, he, hired he them. said he could pull because he had a. Well, he hired <laughs> black people. That's what's oh, funny. Oh, no. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> but, so, but he stated that he could tell one of them was white because he could see like the outline of their eyes within okay. the mask or whatnot they were wearing. So it was a big blow up. The, the police, as they were going through the reports, you know, were finding inconsistencies and mm-hmm. it was basically you know he was charged with hoaxing an attack which is a felony multiple felonies okay right and so he went through this court process and everything and today he was uh cleared of all charges why they haven't been able to give much information yet. I've read a couple articles. and the, It just was. Yeah. Well, the reporters say they've been asking a few people, but there's constantly like no comment, no comment, like oh. that kind of thing going on. But my well, maybe guess. Maybe his uncle's a really good lawyer or something. Yeah. I mean, my guess is the guy's just rich. And, you know, if, yeah, if you you're know. rich enough, you can break any law you want. <laughs> I mean, pretty much, right? <sighs> that's it's not been the case like, for the most right? part. I mean, I mean, I, Martha didn't get away with it. That's like, true. <laughs> they made an example out of Martha Stewart. But I feel like if you or I did the exact same thing, oh, you know, dude, there's, we totally there's no down. way we're getting we so away much with that. So, yes, yeah, so, I mean, all the... so cleared of all charges, huh? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, well, hey, that's a good day for him. A good day for him. I mean, I'll I'll keep everybody updated when you know I read more information about it. But I saw that and I was like, really? So I'm sure the internet is in an, in an uproar. Well, I you know what? I haven't seen too much of an uproar. I have a feeling everybody's kind of at the same stance I'm at, where they're just like, how? Yeah. You know, because not only was there like obvious holes in his story, which is why he was charged with the felony in the first place, uh-huh. but 
Oh, I just lost my train of thought. There was a lot of holes in his story. There was a lot of that. holes in his story, but he, oh, but he like came out like afterwards, and he never said like I I made up this whole thing, right? He never right. said those words. He never like admitted to it. Yeah, but he was saying things like I'm messed up in the head, and I have a drug problem. And oh no! All these other things. He shouldn't say those things. He's not in trouble for any of those things. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> don't get like, yourself into more trouble. Yeah, so it's like he didn't ever admit to setting up the hoax, but he didn't ever say that, you know, I had nothing. This was not a hoax at all either. It it sounded very much like he kept trying to make excuses and justifications as to why he did it, you know? So it's just, it's odd. That's, that's a little bit odd. Yeah. One thing I read was that could possibly be a reason why he got thrown out is because, so he hired his two, Jesse Smola hired his two brothers to do the attack, right? Oh, Both brothers family. who are black. Okay. And. Like, but like blood brothers, right? Not like brother, brother. Like blood yeah, brother. I'm assuming so. That's, okay. That's gotcha. just the way the article's worded. They're brothers. That'd be a terribly. So. <laughs> I'm assuming um, they mean blood. Slurry article. If they <laughs> yeah. were like, he hired his two brothers. Okay. All right. Gotcha. But yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> so I hope it's his brothers. But um, so and they say he allegedly sent them a check for like thirty five hundred dollars to do this staged attack. Okay. And I guess they couldn't link that the money was for that. They, but they were able to link that it might have been for something else that was work related. It just happened the day before. Yeah, one of those. Just by weird, coincidence. Yeah, he happened to loan them thirty five hundred dollars each the day before. <laughs> exactly. Right. So of course, that's one of the things I read about it as to whether that was the deciding factor of whether it gets thrown out of court or not. I don't know, but yeah, that's uh, that do, was the big thing that happened today. <laughs> so, do you think he makes any money off of that video? Because it probably got millions of views. So well, somebody's getting some advertising revenue. Well, it wasn't videotaped. It was. Oh, I don't. It was just an allegation. It was just like yeah, an allegation. Oh. He just filed a police report. I thought there was like a video with it. No, I think like I think he actually did get beat up. I think he paid people these people to beat him up, and like he had the the noose and everything like that. But it's there, yeah, nothing was videotaped. It was all just him going to the police and saying this happened. Interesting. So I think you explained it when you fir- when we first talked about the whole thing, mm-hmm. but I don't really remember what what is the um, what's the goal on his end? Like, what does he get out of making up a story like this? So again, this is something that I don't think he has stated himself, but allegedly this was all done. They keep throwing out because he was upset with what fox was paying him for empire okay so maybe he thought i mean i don't know how he linked that That, to staging an attack to get more money right but i mean maybe he thought he was going to get sympathy out of it or Or just become bigger or something his name yeah exactly i mean hell i didn't know who he was until this all happened i didn't either and now i definitely know that (laughs) yeah (laughs) um Hmm. but i mean like i said i don't know there's gotta be like a reason for it yeah. You don't just do that for nothing. You know what I mean? Unless he was super passionate about, like, hating Donald Trump or something. I mean, this day and age, it's not too far out of the realm of possibility. No. You know, there are people who do stupid shit like that all the time. On both sides. Yeah. Well, I sure. remember when the 2016 elections were going on, there was, you know, obviously you were getting a lot of the discourse between the right and the left, you know, during different protests for whatever reason. And I remember watching this undercover video where somebody was infiltrating one of these like liberal groups that go to a lot of these protests and do a lot of these demonstrations. And there was some clips that came out when they were all sitting at lunch or so in some restaurant and they were like, oh, well, we want to we want to stage it like this because we need us to look good and we need them to look bad. So let's do oh. this and but only start taping when we do this. And. So So totally planned out. Yeah. So people definitely will go to those lanes if they hate somebody enough. But it's just, I mean, when you're, when you have that level of fame, I mean, it's really hard. I mean, you have to be really good to get away with that stuff. You know, people are more willing to dig up dirt on you when you're famous. famous. Right. So it's like, and that's exactly why if you and I were to do something like that, we would go straight to jail and be charged, you know, the felony. Yes, I agree. But people are more willing to, you know, dig up dirt or the opposite, you know, to get somebody out of something if you're famous. And you'll almost always find something if you look for it hard enough. Yeah. You'll be able to link it somehow or put it Mm -hmm. together or... 
the crazy thing is sometimes you don't even need the actual evidence there to link it. You just have to put out the right information to create enough of an emotional stir amongst mm-hmm. people. And then just as you've said many times, you say something enough, it suddenly becomes true. Well, it becomes like the literal witch hunt. Yeah. I mean, it's just like what he was saying about, you know, doing the, or not him, but, you know, what they're saying about him doing it to get more money from Fox. Well, he's never actually said that. That's what everybody else is saying. Of course. But if you ask somebody why he did it now, that's what they're going to say. That's the reason. That's now, because enough people have said it. Right. Yeah. You know, so. which is a lot of things nowadays. <laughs> Unfortunately. If you just say it loud enough, it becomes true. Well, and even even aside from that point, you can change the definition of any fucking word you want anymore. You know, uh, call yeah. it a, call it an insult or call it whatever. You know, it's just it's it's weird. Everything going on right now is just weird. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so I read a cool little thing today that was about um, NASA in mm-hmm. space because we're into that sometimes. Yeah. So I guess NASA has been planning since like. 2010 uh, the or 2012. Is no. That what you're talking about? Oh. No, okay. they've been planning a moon mission, like oh, to go okay. not not with people, but an unmanned moon mission to go around the moon okay. and just do some shit. I don't know. We're gonna <laughs> stick a probe in it or something. Whatever we do. <laughs> so uh, Boeing, the company Boeing, was supposed to be building this rocket, and uh, it's supposed to be like. I don't know any details about the rocket, but mm-hmm. it's not like your typical rocket. It's supposed to be like a new design of rocket, okay? But they're having a lot of trouble with it. Mm-hmm. It keeps um, getting pushed back in development, okay. okay? So they're at the point now where it's 2019, and they're like, we need to fucking move on with this because we're already voting on new uh, missions and stuff. So we need to get this one going. Right. So they're ready to just scrap the whole deal with Boeing. <laughs> And Ooh. go with like SpaceX or Virgin or someone else who Ooh. already has rockets. That's a um, lot of money wasted. Well, it's a big hit to Boeing if that were to happen. Yeah, because the you know contracts are the things that pay for the research and development right. of the new technology. Uh-huh. So yeah, if they lose that contract, the money just gets pulled right. just like overnight. It's just that whole fund is gone. So all the people working on that project would just, just lose their job. Just, yeah. Um. So yeah, it would be it would be a pretty big hit. NASA contracts are awesome because they're huge. And oh yeah, only like four companies that can do it. Mm-hmm. So they, I what I read from NASA today was I guess NASA was planning to do an all women spacewalk, which is what so do you mean so spacewalk is is just like where you put on a suit and like if you're on the shuttle and it's orbiting, you just like go out into space. So a lot of the times they'll have you've seen the movie Gravity with Sandy B. Sandy remember, B, yeah. That, remember uh-huh. George Clooney had that little thing yeah, to the like little help chair them. Thing. That, that's a spacewalk. Oh, so and you're talking about they're actually gonna take only women astronauts and have them walk around in space? Yeah. So that like was a real something spacewalk. Yeah. So I guess that okay. was something that was planned and then they just scrapped it. I didn't Don't I didn't, they already do that every day? Isn't it just inevitable that all three women astronauts in the world are gonna be walking at the same time? Well, but it can't the, be that. There's not like a hundred. There's no way. There's a hundred. No, no. But it's. But I think like for every ten astronaut there's been, there's you know one of them had been a woman. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, yeah. So the and plan, there's like what fifty astronauts in the world at any given time. Yeah, something like that. So inevitably they would all be walking in space at some at some point. But they wanted to do an all women. That seems very walk. gimmicky to me. That oh, seems it's, oh, it's very much like just. Looking for uh, ah. Oh, oh, I think that's exactly what it is. I think it's all just it's, gimmicky. I mean, I didn't. Yeah, what I didn't, is that? I didn't read on as to why it was scrapped. I'm not like particularly against but, it either. Like whatever, go for it. But yeah. What does it accomplish, really? Well, and that's just it. Especially when it's something like NASA or any of these space exploration companies. It's like, should we really be worried about being gimmicky? In or space, sh- does it matter? Let's yeah. just survive. Yeah, just hire the smartest people you can to do the jobs yes. and do the jobs. Like, why, why do you have to make everything a fucking gimmick anymore? Ev- literally everything, Adam. Literally everything. God, it's it's horrible, though. It's annoying is what it is at this point. It's exhausting. You know? it's They do that with movies a lot, too. They're, we're getting to a point where the audience is definitely swaying. I should say the loudest audience is swaying the way that like movies and sequels are done now. So I know specifically what I read recently was with 
Captain Marvel. And, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and that was with the actress who I said was saying that she wouldn't interview with anybody yes, unless it, they were the diverse enough. The movie took enough. a big hit because yeah. of that, yeah. And the movie's doing really well now, although I've heard a lot of people say they did not like the movie specifically, but hmm. whatever, you know. The internet's going to say what it wants to say. It's another superhero movie. I'm not a super huge fan of any of the superhero movies. Right. I mean, well, they're cool, but, like, yeah. Well, and for those who are, Marvel's definitely been dubbed, like, the weakest link of all the Marvel yeah. movies right now. I can see it. But there are people taking to the internet and you know, here you have this movie with a female badass star, uh-huh. you know, and now they're saying, okay, well, now we want her gay. So now there's people like just because like, there's no reason. Just because, yeah, just yeah, because. yeah, just to be more diverse or more sensitive it's a whatever gimmick. it is. It's a gimmick. More it's gimmicky. exactly what it is. You know, and I I almost guarantee that Marvel's going to give in and they're going to do that even it's though the just, original comic book character was not gay. Why does that have to be in everything? Mm-hmm. Doesn't that take the magic out of it? Isn't it yes. supposed to be magical to be different and and gay and free? And, so, and if everyone is that and you're in everything, you're not special anymore. And I would even argue too that as far as taking the magic away, I feel like when you try too hard to be gimmicky in some of these things or to just insert these types of you know values or whatever inside right. these shows, it takes you out of the show because now you're like inserting lines to make this a thing. A uh, perfect example is the show Flash that was on uh, CBS, I want to say, one of those channels. Mm-hmm. But anyways, r- really popular show. I got into it too for the first few seasons. And as the seasons progressed, they got better with this. Okay. But I remember the, the first and a little bit of the second season, one of the police uh, chiefs that that uh, is one of the main or uh, more like secondary character in this, but you see him enough, right? right. And he's in this show, but his character is gay, right? Okay. Fine. Does okay. it add to the show the in any way? Doesn't add to the show in any way. <sighs> then no. why? Well, and that's just it. Now it's one thing if there's a conversation taking place in regards to relationships or something like that, and maybe this police officer, you know, responds with, you know, when my, uh, my husband and I first met, we blah, blah, blah. Okay. There's an, there's a natural little plug for it. Sure. Right. But when I was watching the show and like I said, it got better, but as I was watching the show at the beginning, it felt like they kept just inserting those comments, like pushing it in there. Yeah. Just to, to show, look, look, we have a gay person we in here. Gay... We have now, a gay person in here. Isn't that more, more insulting to the fucking demographic than it is it's like it's like saying to them mm-hmm. look how hard we have to try to include you in this i agree look how not natural it is to include you in things we're trying so hard look yes. at us whereas if you just do it mm-hmm. we're gonna notice it because yeah. the whole point is we don't know what's gonna happen mm-hmm. we're interested we're taking in the information we're right. gonna put it together that he's gay mm-hmm and it's not going to be as insulting. It's going to be, look, you naturally fit into this scenario. You're yes. a part of everything else. You're just like everyone else. Mm-hmm. I mean, I always go back to this because it's the closest thing I have personally mm-hmm. is Tourette's. Right. Okay. If all of a sudden it got real big that, oh, we have to be so nice to people with Tourette's. Uh-huh. And they started just pushing them into movies. I would be more upset with that then I would be like, look, they're including us. Yeah, exactly. Don't put a frame around it and Mm -hmm. be like, look how nice we are for including you. Yes. Fuck you. Well, it's it's the exact same way I feel about some of these movies trying to push for like, oh, there's too many white people in this movie. We have to to make sure we hire a black actor. Or there's too many black people in this movie. We need to make sure we hire an Asian actor. Whatever it is. Right. To try to push diversity. It gets to a point to where like me as a filmmaker, and I've had discussions with you about this before, if I'm doing auditions, for a role I just want the best person that can play that role right and if the entire cast ends up being black or Asian or Mexican or whatever it is because of it because those people just happen to be the ones who gave the best auditions right then so be it but if I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, well, I have all of these Mexicans. I need to make it a little more diverse and add a white person here and a black person Especially there. Especially when your movie, <clears throat> let's say your movie is being shot in Scandinavia. Mm-hmm. Okay. In, in the northern part of Scandinavia. Uh-huh. All right. And you say, oh, I need more diversity. 
put two Asians, put a black guy, put put some Mexicans in there. Mm-hmm. The actors are almost at a certain point props in the movie. Right. They are a part of the visual aspect of the movie. Mm-hmm. So now you're totally the immersion is totally broken. Yeah. Like I don't expect to watch a movie about Braveheart, mm-hmm. which take place in Scotland, and have half of Braveheart's army be black guys. Right. Because that's not historically at all what would have been happening. Exactly. He's not a racist in that instance mm-hmm. for having an all white cast. <laughs> right. It's the fucking movie is about the Scottish rebellion against England. Yes. They're predominantly Anglo Saxons. Yes. So it's gonna be a white movie. Mm-hmm. And thankfully I haven't seen anything like that yet with historical movies, which right? Would just be too too far yes but what you do see it with is things like the comic book movies right Mm -hmm. now i i 100 understand that the comic book movies are fictitious right it's all made up correct but you you still have these comics that people grew up with these characters are who they are for a reason and and maybe they were written in a time when things against the races were a little more I was more bumpy just going to make up that right? point yeah. is i think in the superhero movies the uh-huh. big argument is the di- the minorities never had a chance for a superhero mm. back then cuz it was pretty racist back then right which i'm understanding of uh huh but that doesn't mean you need to make Spider-Man a gay Asian guy right. because he was not anywhere close to that. Now, what I'm totally cool with mm-hmm. is gay Asian man mm-hmm. or give him a badass name. Okay, right, But right. make up a new superhero, which we haven't done in a while. Right. We have like kick ass and stuff, which is a mm-hmm. joke. But like a real actual badass superhero and have him be diverse. See, and that's what I think needs to happen. So instead of making these this argument of like, well, like one of the biggest, uh, most recent ones was uh, when the Spider-Man movie was about to come out, Marvel's Spider-Man version, right? Yeah. And there were a lot of talks about how they wanted, people wanted Spider-Man to be black in this one, right? They still uh-huh. wanted to be, because there is a black Spider-Man, but they wanted Peter Parker specifically to be Black, black right guy. okay and i had issues with that just because of like what you said like in the comics you know peter parker is is a young white teenager you know yeah, well don't call it a comic book movie about spider-man if you're gonna do that exactly call it something else but what i think people should do and focus on is just what you said it's like if it doesn't exist already go fucking make it <laughs> And go make you know, one. Go make now one. is yeah. their day. Now is your heyday. You're accepted. Yes. You're in. You're super chic right now. <clears throat> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So now is your time. Shine. Yes. Make a badass hero. Stop worrying about trying to change something that already exists and focus on making something original that's going to take off. Captain Color. Yeah, there you Bada go. <laughs> Spreads color across the world. You exactly. Know? You know, hey, but I, I mean, don't know something. Yeah, but I mean, those are just my opinions on it. You know, and I know a lot of people out there probably disagree. But and I, I just, I don't think that people like yourself and mm-hmm. other like superhero fan, like comic book fans, right? Okay, who grew up with them. When they say we don't want a black Peter Parker, mm-hmm. I do not think that they're racist. I don't think that they're coming at it from a racist point of view. Right. It has nothing to do that they don't want Peter Parker to be black. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's that they don't want Peter Parker to be changed. Yes. They want that character to stay the same that it was when they were kids. And it was exciting to them. And they... Mm -hmm. It's not... If he was... If he would have been black to begin with, we'd be perfectly fine. There's not a big deal of a colored superhero. Yeah. It's... Don't change the stories that we're used to. Exactly. Well, and then you'd look at situations like uh, Black Panther, right? Yeah, he's you know? badass. He's, he's right. Total he's badass. a total badass. He, it was a great movie. He did really well. But the thing is, what what would have happened if you had a group of white fans of Black Panther coming out and saying, "We want Black Panther to be white"? Well, first of all, you're not allowed to do that, right? Because there's a double standard to racism, mm-hmm. which everyone just accepts right. that that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, that if if it's against white people, it cannot be racist. Right. White people are the only ones who can be racist. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't. It would immediately they would be racist for wanting that. Exactly. It would be turned around on you them. Know. Which is such a shame, but I mean, it just like a, the, I, my whole point was just to point out just that, as you said, the double standard. You know, yeah, it, it's very well Where, known. It's totally accepted. But I mean, like I said, it it just comes down to when it comes to these movies and casting somebody, and you know, it, 
if it's a if it's a comic book thing or something that already exists, like an adaption or something, I I do think you should stay true to the original creator's vision. And, and, and keep the characters looking the way they do. And I mean that even down to the point of like Mary Jane in Spider-Man, right? Mary Jane's a, a white ginger, you know? Bro, I hated I when would... they made her blonde. When she was yes. blonde in that one spot. That's a perfect example because mm-hmm. that pissed me off just as much mm-hmm. as having Peter Parker be a black exactly. guy. Exactly. That bothered me just as much as she is a redhead. Mm-hmm. She's well known as a redhead. She's always been a fucking redhead. Yes. Why is this bitch blonde? They didn't even call her fucking Mary Jane in that movie, did they? Oh, you're thinking of the one with Andrew Garfield, the with like Shocker and so, so that's a yeah. different character altogether. She was in the comics. Hated it. It's Gwen Stacy. Hate, she was in it. the comics. I hated it, Adam. But like, but but I totally get what and you I mean. I love though. me some Spider Man, guys. <laughs> He's my favorite superhero. So, but I totally get what you mean, though. Like in the newest Spider Man, right? So the newest Spider Man that Marvel made is my favorite, right? It's it's you, my favorite I adaption seen it. of it. You said it's great. I know. We have you to, said it's great. We have to get you to watch it here, but they um. But the character, they do introduce a character in there. Uh, they, they introduce Mary Jane at some point in the movie. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't have red hair, right? And but, and here's the thing, too. So they did get a black girl to play Mary Jane in this. But that honestly bothered me less that it did, that she just didn't have red hair. If she, she had red, red hair, hair I would have been fine. She, there was never a time that she didn't have red hair. Exactly. She didn't even dye her fucking hair. Exactly. That's what she was known as. That's like making her not his neighbor anymore. Yeah. That's like being like, oh, well, in this rendition, she lived in the next city over. Right. That, that would bother me just as much. You're fucking up the story. Exactly. They were neighbors. He loved her since he was a kid. He had a mm-hmm. crush on her, and he finally gets the chance with her. And I think this conversation is a great example to point out just what you said it, it's not that people it's just that people do not want the subject matter I don't to want change the story to, not this kind of story at least yeah i don't not something as specific as a superhero right it'd be like changing his powers <clears throat> mm-hmm. it would be like saying okay batman has webs now and right. and spider-man's a billionaire and really it's just a suit that mm-hmm. he created that gives him it's electricity giving him power like no you're fucking up you're putting iron man where batman belongs you're putting right. spider-man inside of batman stop it right <laughs> see and that's and that's and that's all we're saying guys it's just like when when it comes time to the subject matter i i just believe you should stay true to the subject matter as as much as possible i you know agree. and there are some ways you can do it to make it work and there are some ways you know I think what it about doesn't. putting in a new sidekick. Like all of a sudden, like taking Batman, who uh-huh. always had Robin, uh-huh. okay? And he still got Robin, let's mm-hmm. just say. But now, all of a sudden, in 2020, they put out a new Batman movie and they give him a, a new sidekick. Okay? <laughs> Bluebird Man, yeah. Bluebird. <laughs> Bluebird is his new sidekick, all right? right? And he's a badass and he's well received and he's cool and all mm-hmm. that. Did, is that still changing the story too much or is it okay to add new things to an old story Hmm. what do you think i'm kind of torn so i'm a little torn also now the reason why i am torn is because movies have now become the new comic books right you don't Mm -hmm. collect comic book issues you collect movies you know there are different versions of batman comics or different versions of batman movies that's a good example yeah so when you have something like a new movie comes out and you introduce this new character, I would say that you would have to set up the movie in general as a, a new Batman story. Like you couldn't say we're going to do we're going to make a movie version of the comic book of, from Batman called The Last Halloween. No, 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 the new one. Blue... So he's still fighting the Joker. Mm-hmm. He would still there's still. Um... All the same, he's still in Gotham City. He's right. fighting the Joker, but it's a new story. It hasn't. They're not retelling a comic book. They're saying this is uh, Batman Unleashed. So if it's a new story, <laughs> I'm actually okay with that. And even in the senses of like the Spider-Man movies, going back to that, if they did a total, if they did a Spider-Man movie that like was loosely based on the comics, but kind of went its own way, then I would be perfectly fine. You changing up the characters and what they look like and all of that stuff. And I'd say the same thing about Batman. But again, going back to my example of the comic book, if you're now basing that movie 
off of you know this comic book that already exists and you add this element of bluebird the sidekick that's when it starts to bother me cuz he wasn't in there because he wasn't in there he that's but you not can, who he was you can continue to build the story however you want right exactly okay so how about if it's not a character what if it's a situation like what if they made a new Sp- a new spider-man that's the next rendition of spider they're adding on to the story but they have him and mary jane break up mm. D- does that change it too much now Do- are there certain things that you just have to hold true to so so I do think there are certain things you have to hold truth to. Yeah. Um, in regards to that, I would say as long as you get to the same ending point. So like if the series ends with, you know, the comic book series that is right. with Peter Parker and Mary Jane getting married in the end or something, you right. can't have them break up and then he gets married to, you know, S- Sally, what's her name right. over here? Right. You know what I mean? Now, so, are all the comic books, the, the big ones that mm-hmm. we know of today, are all of those set up in a way where they have ended? Like, do they all pretty much have an ending? Uh, no. No, so they're still kind of open yeah, to keep going. Yeah, a lot of them are still open. So, But there have been some that have I'm like... big in comics, guys. Sorry. <laughs> that's right. That's why you have me here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but there are some like uh, DC, for example. So mm-hmm. DC just kept continuing, right? So all the stories, Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, were just these comics that were continuing back from the 50s. Okay. You know, so they kept going. And I think, like, the last issue of Superman was Superman giving up, like, his American citizenship. Like, it went that far. Yeah, there there was a lot that happened. And um, That got a little political. Yeah, just a little bit. (laughs) This was back in, like, 2011, though. Oh, wow. But uh, so what they've done now, though, to get... A new viewership into comics is they've actually rebooted all of the DC comics and it's called the new 52. Uh-huh. So they've, so they completely said, okay, we're done with this and now we're starting Batman. Here's Batman issue one. And oh, here's Superman recent. issue so one. The only thing that's the same now is the superhero and their powers. Yes. Now we're putting them in. Is the world the same? Is Batman still in Gotham City? So for the most part, yeah, they're still in Gotham City. So the story itself is still pretty much the same, but it's more like the feel and the atmosphere okay. is a little different. So now. everything you know from the last story, forget it. Yeah. We're restarting now. Exactly. So any characters can develop in any way now. Mm-hmm. They can do whatever. Exactly. But they're still... The Joker and Batman and Spider-Man right. and the But Green they're just Goblin different, and, you know? So instead of getting, like, j- just to use the movie Jokers as an example, instead of getting the Jack Nicholson of Jokers that we did in the last Batman comics, uh-huh. we're now getting a Jared Leto Joker in this one. So they take the bad guys and the well, characters and they change them around a little bit. You, who, as a person who's a particular uh-huh. fan of a very specific character, like uh-huh. the Joker. Right. You, know, you like Batman stuff, but you really specifically really like the enjoy Joker. the Joker. Yeah. For you as that kind of fan, how do you feel about what they're doing? How do you feel about the revamp thing? So I love – so I do really appreciate revamps um, because I do love to see how are they going to go about about it this time. I do think there is a right and a wrong I way to do it. I was just going to ask that. You like live yeah. in my head. So be like, <laughs> does it, do you, is there a way that they're going to do it right and that they could do it wrong? So yeah, there's definitely a right and a wrong way. So in – in regards to like the Joker in this new Fifty Two, and right. I've and I've read a few of the comics from the new Fifty Two, but I'm not a big, uh, I'm more of a, like an anime comic person, not so much a superhero comic person, right? Gotcha. So, but the Joker is so I do love the Joker character in this. They made him okay. much more like you know how Batman's supposed to be this like high IQ genius. He well, is they, supposed to be. Yeah. They kind of played off the Joker as if he was also that. Oh, cool. So you have this, like, big contrast. So not so much psychopath, more genius. Yeah. More more in tune with what he's doing. Exactly. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that. So more of like a Hannibal Lecter kind Kind of thing almost. Yeah. Interesting. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So, and they gave him this cool, like... They gave him this, the way that, like, you know how the Joker's known for having this, you know, crazy smile that's Uh basically glued to his face and everything? Well, the way they played that off in this one was the Joker, for, I don't know what the reason was, but cut off the skin on his face. Uh 
and then put it back on his face, but stretched it out. Oh. So the smile is red because of the red, you know, under skin oh, that's there. And his face looks, you know, pointed and everything because he took this skin and pulled it back on himself. But he always wears these really nice, like, pinstripe suits with a little flower at the end. And he has, you know, really slick back, nicely oh, combed hair. Oh, he's much hair. more in tune with what he's doing. Yes. I like it. But he's still a psychopath. He's still fucking crazy. Yeah. Um, I really liked how they did it with Heath Ledger. Mm -hmm. How they, it wasn't like a mask they put on him or a thing that he wore. They just took a regular guy and painted his face. Yes. But it wasn't perfect paint. It was very much, it came, it looked like he was sweating. It came off a lot in areas. Well, and you know, Heath Ledger did that makeup himself. Did he really? So, you know, so if you watch like scenes. I loved it. Yeah. So if you watch scenes with Heath Ledger in it, he has, uh, he has like paint and everything on his fingers and hands from putting on the makeup. But it looks like the dude actually did it before he went out to be crazy. Like the actual Joker guy did that. Right. So that was it's still on his fingers. So the makeup, the all they did for him with makeup was they gave him the scars on the side of his face coming up right. to make that smile. But then all they did was Heath Ledger just went to the bathroom with all the makeup stuff and just used his hands. And to it put looks on like a crazy makeup. guy yeah. who fucking did it and went, "Okay, I'm going out now." Exactly. And I just little things like that mm-hmm. I appreciate so much more than any kind of special effect. Yeah. That well, makes you like tingle when you see shit like yeah. that. Like, ooh, it's creepy. Well, and what I really <laughs> appreciate about the different renditions of the Joker is the Joker is such this vague character that you can mm-hmm. almost play him off in any way that you want. So one way that people have described like the th- at least the three most famous iterations of the Joker right now, which are Jack Nicholson, Heath Ledger, and Jared Leto, right, is they've described Jack Nicholson was the clown Joker. Yes, I uh, can see Heath that. Ledger was the the anarchist and then you had okay. uh jared leto which is the psychopath oh and i haven't seen jared leto yet yeah there's not much to see in him but he oh, looks no. like a psychopath but he just really pulls out the fucking crazy man yeah well it's, it's hard to say because he's only in like 15 minutes of the movie suicide squad the only movie he'd appeared in oh that's where he's from okay. yeah, yeah yeah i ha- i've only seen like the first 30 minutes of that movie yeah so he's not in there a lot but that's the way they describe his rendition of the joker but it's cool because you have the you can only play batman so many ways but you can play the joker in so you know it'd be nice to see someone play batman with a little bit of flair give him a little personality and something i've thought about that nice i've thought about that myself he's so cardboardy yeah, Isn't that's he? a good way to put it. Yeah, at least definitely the ways he's played in these movies. You, there's yeah. there's no real different way that these actors play Batman. Give it's, him like a sense of humor, maybe. Yeah. Like give him like some quips, you mm-hmm. know? Like, like, well, maybe not to the point of Spider-Man where he's an all-out fucking dick sometimes. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, make him like a little bit clever. Well, what I almost want to see from Batman is you always, the reiterations of Bruce Wayne and Batman constantly is is just as you said, it's always been very cardboard. It's like setting cotton stone, right, of how uh-huh. he's supposed to be. Yes. You know what I would like to see is... I would almost like to see a Batman who's younger, so maybe a beginning stage Batman. Oh, that'd be interesting. Who's just this young billionaire who lost his parents. He's super smart, has a super IQ, but he's just a fucking sh- little shit. You know, he's got an attitude like problem, a pompous little, little pompous and everything. And he thinks he can save the world, right? Yeah. But he's sl- and it's slowly his journey of him learning, like, you know, it's harder. You have to be, you know, that would be cool. show more humility. He's instantly extremely collected and, yeah. like, I don't know, very conscious of all his moves. And right. So make him a little bit more outside the box. And he'd be one of those characters that would be played off as any random third party that sees him would be like this little fucking shit. But then he'll like make these crazy deals with people or call people out on their bullshit when they're, you know, trying to score deals with Wayne Enterprises because yeah. he's just super fucking smart. So he's almost like a Sherlock Holmes, almost like a sociopath. That right? would be interesting. I would like to see a Batman that would like be that. Interesting. It adds a different flair on the character, you know, but you're still kind of holding to the values of Batman. You just get to go through the process of how he learns those values. Have, have they made a Joker standalone movie? No, but they are. Oh, okay. They so should be. Joaquin Phoenix is playing him. Who's He's, Joaquin uh, yeah, Joaquin. Who's s- that? Uh, you've seen him. Did you ever see the movie Her? 
at all whether the guy like falls in love with like the machine or anything like that or he was in signs with Mel Gibson. Signs. Okay, I've seen that okay, one. The guy Let's with, go with that. So the the <laughs> uncle the uncle. Yeah, the kind of, he has like the cleft lip. He was the one who like used the baseball bat at the end of oh, the, the movie. Oh, oh yeah, 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 the yeah, uncle. Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's Joaquin Phoenix. He's going to be the Joker? He's going to be the Joker. Mm. And it's a standalone movie. It's like the origin of Joker. But it has nothing to do with any of the current universes that exist now. Why'd we have to lose him? Why'd we have to lose him? He was just the best one. I know. He could have played it for the rest of his life. And they were going to. And they were going to. Well, it was an... I remember shortly after his death, it came out that Christopher Nolan, um, his brother John Nolan, and David S. Goyer, who wrote all the Batman movies, they were planning on making a six-movie deal. Oh, here. it would have been amazing. And the bad guys in the third movie, which ended up being Bane, but originally was supposed to be the Penguin and the Riddler. Oh, fuck and yeah. That Phil- would have been the yeah. way coolest. Philip Seymour Hoffman was already set to play the Riddler. Or, I'm sorry, the, uh, penguin. the Penguin. The Penguin. I was and, gonna say, he's a Penguin. And Johnny Depp was set to play no! the Riddler. Yeah. And then it was gonna be Heath as the fucking and Joker? And Heath was gonna be the Joker. Bro. Yeah. Fucking. I know. Can you say Oscars all around? I know. Holy shit, that would have been amazing. And so, but when Heath Ledger died, it, it Make made... Leonardo DiCaprio fucking Batman? Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. That'd be a classy Batman, I mean, that'd bro. That'd be a classy ass. Fucking bad. He could pull, to, he could pull off the billionaire thing really well. Oh too. fuck yes. He's a little skinny. They'd have to give him some Bulk muscles. Him up. Yeah. But dude, yeah. He doesn't really have the voice for Batman either. No, I mean have they, a rough time with the voice. They could add it. I really what I really enjoyed about Ben Affleck's reiteration of Batman, or not so much the way he played it, but the way that they depict it was instead of making, you know, Ben Affleck go go, you know, I'm here for all of you. Oh, you know Christian Bale it the whole way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All they did was they added like uh an element of he had like a little voice changer in his suit. That huh. gave him like a deeper voice when he spoke. So it still sounded a that's little electronic. But yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Just do it for Leo. But yeah. He might be able to do the Joker. I think he could do a good Joker. He might he'd be, be able to do able a great to do Joker. A Joker. You know what he'd be able to do? Has well? he played a fucking insane dude? Uh, I want to say he has, but I just can't think of the particular movie he's played it in. But. You know what he would do well as far as Joker is the iteration that's done in the New 52 comics I was talking yeah. about. He could do that the Hannibal very Lectory well. kind of Joker. Yeah. yeah, he could do that. He that could would, do that. He'd be a good one for that. He's always busy with shit, though, man. He's always doing something. Yeah. Every, like, six years, you're like, here's a fucking Oscar-winning movie <laughs> that's not going to get any Oscars. I'm sure his next one is going to be this Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, dude. Oh, yeah, that's you know? the next one we And Tarantino's won Oscars before, so that may very well be in the running for Oscars. I don't Oscars. think that Leo even gives a shit anymore. I no. think he says, fuck your Oscars. He doesn't no. even care. Well, and he posted, I remember he posted something on Twitter once, because after he did Wolf of Wall Street, everybody was like... He's like, I'm fucking done. I'm done with the whole <laughs> academy. Screw all you guys. I'm not even going to go to the show anymore. I hate all of you. Which is literally <laughs> why, that is that is exactly why he hasn't got an Oscar in the first place, because he talked shit about the Oscars during Titanic. Well, be- <laughs> Dude, I'd be pissed too uh-huh. if I was fucking twenty five year old Leonardo DiCaprio mm-hmm. and I played Jack that well, and then I got fucking cheated. I would be pissed. no, no. That's not that's not why he talked shit before Titanic was even like talked about oh. being in the running. Okay, yeah, what the fuck, dude? You know, but that's like, you exactly be cool why. About it. Yeah, but that's why he wasn't. But then he backed it up. Mm-hmm. He he was like, I'm the best. But then here, I really yeah. am. But he posted something on Twitter, so but he did Wolf of Wall Street, and everybody was saying, oh, he should be nominated, which I do think he should have been nominated for that role, by far. By far. You know, and DiCaprio just, you know, did the whole humble acting actor thing, was like, I just do it for the love of the acting. He's like, I'm a millionaire either way. <laughs> yeah, guys, I'm going to get worked no matter like, what. It's fine. I can literally get on any <laughs> set that I choose. I, he's literally worked with all the greats at least once yeah. at this point. I think he probably picks the projects he wants. Oh yeah, everyone for probably sure. emails him all day long. Oh yeah, well, his, for his, sure. Um, agent, at least. There was a actor, uh, William H Macy, I think is his name. He's on that. He's on the American version of uh, 
fuck, I can't remember the name of it. You, he's a character actor. You'd recognize him if you saw him. But he okay. was, but he was nominated for like an Emmy or an Oscar for some role that he did. And he went on Conan talking about his nomination for this Oscar. And he said, it's nice. He goes, because once you're nominated for an Oscar, you don't have to go to auditions anymore. People just call you. That's just automatically yeah. you're in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's so, that level. So, it, and it almost made me appreciate <laughs> Like wanting to get an Oscar because I've always just been like whatever fuck awards, especially with how political we know they are now. Just like they're not. Well, it shows to how me. much power the Academy has, dude. Yeah. They literally get to choose who gets work and who doesn't. Right, and that comment put into perspective with me a little bit. I was like, oh, that's why you strive for an Oscar, yeah, so that you don't have to ever go through the bullshit of auditioning again. Right, exactly. You, know? you just choose your roles you want. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh, you know, but DiCaprio has his Oscar now. So he got it for the most obscure fucking movie. Well, he like made. hardly talked in it. Talked Reverend, in too. Reverend. Yeah, I mean it's was not it? so obscure. It was nominated for best picture. No, when I it saw it. Too. It was it was a good movie, but mm-hmm. it's not his best movie. No, I it's... feel like, but I, I feel like that was a gimmicky thing. I feel like the Wolf of Wall Street movie well, it was started all about Native Americans. Yes. Well. So. Well, not not so much gimmicky in that sense, but just like. Like DiCaprio was pandered to in that because there was so much talk about how he should have won an Oscar for Wolf of Wall Street. And then it was literally the next year that The Revenant came out and they're like, all right, guys, calm down. We'll give to, we'll give Leo his fucking Oscar. You know, that's what it felt like to me. He's like, probably mad. He'd probably rather not have it. He'd probably <laughs> just go down in history as the guy who out fucking acted everybody and never got an award for it yeah exactly you know what i mean or he's probably just angry that he goes he's probably like out of every role i've played this is the one it's almost like they were screwing with him <laughs> exactly it was literally his poorest role that i think he's played and it, and it was still great right but it the special effects were the only thing that made that movie awesome yeah the acting overall was n- average it wasn't very good very well acted overall well, and what exactly because i have not seen it what, what exactly is the movie about a guy gets attacked by a bear and then basically just has to survive no that's like a scene okay of the movie so the actual story of the movie is um he's he's this guy and he goes america is being settled still mm-hmm. so it's mostly native americans that are still in america right and they're like they have villages and shit. They're doing stuff. So he's right. a fur trapper. He traps um, animals and collects the furs, and then he brings them back to where he lives, and he sells them. That's mm-hmm. how he makes money. So he gets over there, and circumstances happen. There's a whole thing about an adopted son that he had that he gets betrayed, and his son mm-hmm. gets killed. So there's a protagonist that he hates that he's trying to get revenge on throughout the whole thing. Gotcha. That's what kind of keeps the story moving forward. Okay. Um, but along that path, very early on on the path towards getting revenge. Sorry about that, guys. We had some uh, technical difficulties. Uh, <laughs> oh, my. To, to you, it just sounds like we started talking and then just started talking about this. But, you know. Um, yeah, it only took us 46 episodes to <laughs> um, have one of us accidentally unplug the microphone. Sorry, guys. So anyway, uh, back we were, to what I was saying We were here. talking about the ending of The Reverend, or the, how The Reverend The went. Reverend. So, yeah, he's... There's a protagonist that he's trying to go after throughout the whole thing because mm-hmm. he got betrayed and his son got killed. And throughout this journey, very early on in the journey, mm-hmm. he gets fucked up right. uh, by a bear. Uh-huh. And then he also ends up at some point like falling off a cliff and having to cut his own horse open and uh-huh. sleep inside of it to stay warm. Like all these different things that go on. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, my point, I guess, being good movie – not the one that he probably should have got the award for. Right. You know. And uh, so it's such a, it's such a shame and we we've talked about this before but like it, it always it always disheartens me when I see all of these like really great independent flicks that are made and are truly driven by the story and it keeps you enticed even if it's just two people sitting there talking to each other and those movies never see the light of day. No, they you go know? unnoticed. Um, I think that happens a lot mm-hmm. in, in what we do, yeah. in, in podcasting, mm-hmm. in in YouTube, a lot oh, of yeah. me, any media. Um, it's the hardest part of breaking out in something like media mm-hmm. isn't the content. The content comes pretty naturally, honestly. Right. Um, you pretty much find the thing that people like 
to listen to you do or watch mm-hmm. you do in particular, and then you stick to that. Yeah. Right? That, that's the easy part, really. Mm-hmm. The hardest part, man, is just getting eyes to see it at first. Yes. Um, I know there's many a days where I sit on the couch and I just take to Facebook all day mm-hmm. long, and it's just, you know, trying to friend people, trying to... Uh, have them message you and say, hey, have we met before? Right. And then you get you have about three sentences to pitch to this person, I'm sorry for bothering you. Right. Here's what I'm doing. I hope you like it. Right. Um, it, that It's a challenge, man. That mm-hmm. is really Yeah, and thank, hard. thank God you do that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the point is, we ha- I, in our case specifically, right. we have a person, we have you, mm-hmm. who has been to media school right. or film school who knows how to edit mm-hmm. above average you know maybe not the greatest editors ever lived right. I I'd think like you th- are I'd like to think it's above average at least a little bit right for sure <laughs> so that's not the issue uh-huh. the reason that content goes under the the radar, radar yeah. is the marketing part is hard man some yeah. people have a lot of money to just market themselves with well and then it's crazy too because you don't realize just how many you know, potential viewers are out there. And I, and I first saw this in television where there are times, that, so so we here at the millennial household, we don't have like cable or anything, right? So, yeah, we, no. so we use what most of you guys use, Netflix, Hulu, you know, yeah, those different Chromecast. things. Chromecast. And so that's where we watch all of our content. But when I go over to like my parents' house who has cable and I'll be watching whatever movie or shows on and it will cut to commercials and they'll always have commercials of like, like, you know, stay tuned for the premiere of season five of Kate and me, you know, and I'm like, like, I've never fucking heard of this show and it has five seasons, Mm -hmm. but that means there's enough people watching that show to make it worth having five seasons. Yes. And that's what, that's kind of the craziest thing to me and I mean we've seen it on YouTube YouTube channels we've never heard of and we're like but they have three million people subscribe to that wow <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And so it's it's wild dude the way that it works but I mean that's also kind of the cool thing you you literally have all this kind of content <laughs> cater to your needs there's one podcast we found I won't name them because we want to put anybody on blast uh-huh. but they are from a land far far away and they literally sit, there's like six of them, uh-huh. and they sit in this cement room mm-hmm. with terrible sound. Hor- it's not even soundproof. It's just a fucking empty room. And they have like a couch and a few things, and they podcast. Yeah. They have a podcast, and you, you can watch them. And they're clearly not actors. They're clearly just regular people. Mm-hmm. And it's not bad. I enjoy the content. I've watched a few episodes of what they do, and it's good content, mm-hmm. but the quality is not very good. Yeah. And these guys have a lot. They have, like, what, almost a million uh, subscribers? Probably more than that, yeah. Uh, Very, very big Uh in the land that they are from. Yes. (laughs) And it just, I don't, me and Adam, we find cases like this all the time Mm -hmm. of the standard of what we have here in America for what we expect to see. Mm -hmm. It's got to be Hollywood quality. Otherwise, we're like, yeah, they tried. Mm -hmm. But everywhere else in the world... It's not really like that. No. Much what we would consider lower quality Mm -hmm. is very easily accepted to other parts of the world. Well, and it kills me for people who are, you know, who are from America who are doing this and are making these kind of podcasts and things or even just podcasts I've listened to on my own that don't have video associated with it. Um, But... For the sake of this example, the podcasts that are out there again, I'm not going to put anyone on fire. Yeah, no, no, no. But there are podcasts. But here. there are podcasts out there that are are very famous, and they do have video associated with it. And it nothing angers me more when I'm listening to a podcast in my car, and they're constantly bringing up like. You know, like the like one person will say to somebody else, "What what the fuck is that face?" You know, but nobody, and they'll just drop the comment and leave. But nobody gives context to the people who are just listening to the thing that you call a podcast, right? And saying for those who are listening to the podcast, you know, this person made this look at me right now. Yeah, and there are there's one particular podcast that I do enjoy, but. 
they do have episodes where they're heavy on doing things where it's obviously more enjoyable to watch this particular episode than to listen to it. Right. And that's fine. But then don't fucking market it as a podcast because if you market something as a podcast, that means you mean it to be something that people can it's listen audio. to. Yeah. yeah. There can be video that enhances it a little bit, but yeah. you don't want the video to be the main focus of it. Exactly. You want it to still be just as enjoyable if you're in your car mm-hmm. driving. And that stuff really bothers me when I'm listening to podcast. That can be um, that can be a struggle. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of that just comes from the bigger viewership for the creator comes when they start to put video out. Yeah, absolutely. A lot, of, a lot more people would watch this podcast mm-hmm. if there was video with it. Mm-hmm. Which sure. one day, one day, folks, we will get there. One day we will get there. That is very and much on the agenda. But but no, you're you're right, and I, and I understand. There's a there's a level of well, we're already this big, so people are going to listen or watch it regardless of what we do, and which is a wrong way to think about yes, it. Yes, and the this particular podcast I'm thinking of, I think, has definitely reached that particular point. Point. But, you know, just as you said, it's not the way to think about it. You should right. just always, you know, keep in mind what the content is you're creating, how to go about creating that content and make sure it's enjoyable, especially if it's a podcast. If you have a video associated with it, well, make sure it's something enjoyable that people doing either or. You can know, get the same experience. Can get the same or similar. Experience. Yeah, kind of similar. Exactly. You know. Agreed. Whereas, like, you know, it, and it sometimes it's just as simple as you know, if people listening to the audio podcast, you can sit there and go, "You guys can't see right now, but Matthew next to him has this really big black cup with football players on it." Which is saying that, uh, Adam looks pissed right now. Yeah, or, you know, he, exactly. You Little look, things you like look that. really confused. Let me ha- something like that instead <laughs> yeah. of what is that face? Yeah, exactly. You know? And then people are just having to kind of make up the content for themselves. And it just, I don't know, that stuff really bothers me. But that was also, you know, why I wanted to get into this business in the first place was because I saw a lot of these podcasts out there and this, these YouTube channels that existed and this content created. And I'm just like, ooh, I could do that better. That's, that's Adam. <laughs> We're doing our best to do it better for you, folks. I hope you enjoy it, guys. I really do. All well, right. I do believe that puts us right about at time for today. Right about at time, guys. Uh, thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. Uh, it was I had a lot of fun today's I had podcast. Fun. Sorry for the little hiccup. Uh, you know, it should have only been a half a second. But, yeah, for you, you guys, know, but it was bad. it was a little longer for us. <laughs> 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 all right, guys, thank you for so, uh, so much for listening. Remember, you can follow us on all the social media accounts. Remember, you do have a second update video coming towards you before April first. Uh, could be on March thirty first. I don't know. We'll find out. But uh, thank you, guys. Foreshadowing. 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 <laughs> But you guys have been uh, great supporters. Uh, we have a lot more likes on the Facebook page now and the Instagram. Uh, so just keep like, commenting, and subscribing. You're killing it, guys. We appreciate you. Any last words, Matthew? Uh, okay, stick around. Number 50 is coming up soon, guys. That's a big one. Ooh, number 50, guys. Woo! All right, bye-bye, guys. Bye.